We're doing um, a two degree of freedom planar robot. This is Ludwin, Lassen, and myself, Juan Solucio. Um, basically, what we try doing is model an uh, industrial type robot, the type that you see. I don't know if you've seen the commercials of, to say, GM, you see a unibody going down the assembly line, and you see these arms doing all spot welds, maybe even painting, doing assembly work. But we made a simplified version because time constraints and money, basically. And in, in the project we did, we pretty much included everything we learned in class, the inverse kinematic theory, force analysis, the basic language, software simulation. Um, for software, we use SOLIDWORKS, causal motion. This was our original concept. Um, basically, it was going to be made out of aluminum using bronze self-lubricating bushings. But we ran into the, the problem that to do that, we would have to mount all those servos away <laughs> from the axis of rotation. And we would have to use linkages, much like, let's say, your hand, how your hand and arm work with tendons and everything. And that would introduce a lot of play into the system. And for our intention that we're trying to draw rectangles and circles, that would not have worked very well. So we went with a new design, which is that. It's a lot simpler, a lot cheaper. And it uses uh, acrylic. Uh, we used a 24, a four foot square piece of acrylic. We cut down, we, used, we made the arms out of it. And directly bonded the, the acrylic to the servo motor horns. Oh, there's a list of bill of materials. In total, we spent about $130. That's a little bit more than... That's what we would have spent. We would have bought everything, but we had a lot of the stuff. The, the piece of acrylic is borrowed. Um, the platform, that's the acrylic. The servo motors, they cost us 14 bucks each. They were the cheapest ones there, and we used we reused the BS2 board that we had used from the previous project. So. Okay, so uh, as you guys you guys can see, this is kind of a different project. It's not like you, uh, most of your projects uh, depends on uh, sensors and uh, uh, IR sensors or light sensors. This is just uh, kind of an application of what we learned in class. Uh, it's a, just a simple two degree of freedom arm. So our design. Just, uh, just to give you a little bit of uh, how we divide our, our responsibilities, we actually kind of work together on each of the uh, aspects of the design. But the, the way the, the design went along, actually, this is kind of the methodology that we followed. Um, just like I said the last, the, the previous presentation, we first just uh, determine the size, just ran the randomly pick up uh, the links, the lengths we want. And just we, we go ahead and conduct the inverse kinematics and just see whether we're going to encounter any singular positions or not, and then uh, do other calculations like velocity acceleration and so on. And based on that, we went ahead and actually defined our, uh, our uh, intervals, our actually limits of, the, uh, of what the arm can draw. And uh, after that, after, we, after making sure that the uh, theoretical results make sense, we go ahead and do the Cosmos motion to simulate the robot, see if there's no singular position, positions again. And um, the final phase actually was the construction of, uh, of uh, our model. And uh, this is just to give you a like, little qu equation we use actually during the inverse kinematics. Uh, uh, we kind of include that in the, in the report in details. Uh, next slide. Uh, the reason I'm showing these data you can see it's a lot of numbers, but the reason I'm say, um, showing this is that in our design, what we intended first actually is to do the inverse kinematics, and based on the number, on the values of theta, so theta one and theta two, we could figure out the pulse, the pulses we need to actually send to the servos. However, that, that wasn't the case. Uh, we had to do it manually. We had to. Uh, the numbers didn't make sense because these servos are only uh, the ranges are from. Uh, 250 to 1250, but then when we tried them, we had to align them so the, the, the numbers were different. 
and then the numbers we got theoretically are over the limit. So what we had to do is do it manually. So we would pick a point and kind of play with the with the motion of the arm until we get to that point, and then we register the the, the pulses for that specific point and so on. So the process was tedious, but uh, that was the only uh, I mean that was the only way we could do it. And uh, if you go to the next slide, please. And this is just a general algorithm of the uh, of the of the of the program. Uh, it's not exactly that as we intended. That's what we wanted really to do. Uh, so obviously the robot doesn't check for any singular positions. Uh, the only program what it has now is uh, is a whole bunch of pulses that it needs to send, and that's what it does. It doesn't check for any singular positions or any data or any data like that. So. Uh, Part of the reason, because of the uh, limitation of the of, of the RAM, we because uh, uh, there's only a number of lines that you could put in the, in in a specific program. That was one of the reasons. And um, okay, next slide, please. These are the problems we just found uh, doing our project. Uh, as Lansen said, <coughs> we found that the values, the false values that we found from the Finemaris analysis. Didn't, didn't make sense with the values that the pulse where our server was supposed to be. He said that it's going to be from 250 to, to 1250, which is um, almost impossible for some of the points to get the, those kind of pulse. Also, the, the servos weren't precise enough due to the links. They were so, I mean, they are pretty... They're not that long, but still the servos weren't weren't working that well. So they were just getting crazy when we went to, let's say, when we when we were running until until the middle of the of the circle of the or the rectangle, and then we we just want to restart it again. It was just getting crazy. Yeah, let me add to that. Um, the the actual servos we bought, they're Futaba, but they were the bottom of the line ones that they had and the, the gearing is made out of plastic and they have a lot more backlash than we thought they would. So you pick up a point and the arm would be there and then you go somewhere and then you pick that point again and it wouldn't be at the same point anymore. So you, it's not you, we couldn't repeat what we want. Another problem we found is that the servos were mismatched. That means that they're supposed to run again from 250 to, to 1250 but the fir for example, the servo for arm one goes through, I mean, from 300 to 1200. So we have to play also around that number. And for, for, for the servo two, we got from 275 to 1165, which makes, a, I mean, makes our, our job just make it um, harder than that we're supposed to get with the, with the numbers we're getting from the, from the servos. And uh, also the distances between the between the, between two adjacent points has to be so close. So again, the servos doesn't 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 get like that crazy and get like smooth. For um, our samples, smooth circles and smooth uh, rectangle lengths. Okay, just to uh, add to that, uh, <coughs> so what made our pro process look a little more tedious actually. Uh, this, if you want a smooth, let's say for example a smooth circle, you have to take a lot, a lot of data points. They have to be very close to, to each other. Uh, but we couldn't do that because, I mean, obviously we, got, we could only do so much. Uh, we did like more than, uh, more than 40 points just on a small circle. So imagine if it's a big circle. So that's what made the process really tedious. And that's why when we draw a shape, it's not as smooth as we wanted, wanted to. Um, and the last thing we found is that we couldn't combine the circle program with the, with the rectangle program because that was not enough uh, memory. So we have to divide it. Uh, for, the, for example, we have to first run the circle, which is the first example it's going to be. And then we have to run the, I mean, download the rectangle and then run it. So for the conclusion, is, uh, it was uh, pretty... Uh, good project uh, in order to practice the lessons learned in class, share the kinematics, force analysis, P basic, and also some other concepts from other class like like mechatronics, and bring it to.
to the real life which we can see on this simple example.